Welcome to Spaces Between, a podcast about bringing gamers closer together. I'm your host, Roy Kane, and with me today is a very special guest, Sung Wan. What's going on, man? Hey, it's going good. How about you? I'm super excited to have you on the show today. I know probably a lot of people in like the Dice Tower sphere mm. or, or people that are super into board games might not necessarily know who you are, but you have like sure. a huge like YouTube presence and you did like vines and stuff back in the day. You also do voice acting and you do all sorts of different stuff. And one of the reasons I had you on the show is because you also are really getting into doing board game review stuff and you're really right. into board games as well. Oh yeah, board games I would say are the Number one thing keeping me busy in my free time, for sure. Uh, I've been going pretty hard for like the last several years. And uh, one thing that I love, and I was actually talking to Tom about this, I was mm. like, how does it feel to know that uh, the Raspy Knife review has yeah. more views than any of Tom Vassell's reviews ever? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that, I guess. Uh, uh, I respect Tom a lot. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> a big fan of the Dice Tower. Um, but Ras- something about Raspy Knife Man just uh, yeah, it attracts Listen, all the all the views. Tom, Tom, all he had to do was just yeah. hold up the box and be like, this plays eight players, you know. And He's he just got to rebrand, bring a knife into every video, uh, change the voice <laughs> up, and he's golden. That's the key. <laughs> I, I said that to Tom, and he's like, you know, that makes me feel really, really sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's awesome. So, um, so you do all sorts of different stuff. Um, right. I think the first place I saw your stuff is you used to do a lot of, like, really short, like, video clips on Vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, how did how did all that sort of stuff start off, and how has is, how is all that sort of, like, spun into all the other things you do? Uh, well, for me, it was, uh, I always wanted to do voice acting. That was mm-hmm. always the big uh, goal uh, in mind. And around, uh, I want to say 2012 or whatever, I basically graduated from college and I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I want to do voice acting. And so what I started doing was just making stuff online, like stuff That's that awesome. my voice, like comedy bits or uh, audio posts or whatever on uh, Tumblr, Twitter, mm-hmm. YouTube, all whatever you name it. And then Vine was just sort of an evolution of that, where gotcha. uh, um, that sort of took off. A Tumblr took off, and Vine took off, and nice. everything just sort of built up from there. Uh, but yeah, I, it was just a natural progression of I like performing, I like mm-hmm. doing comedy stuff, and Vine was like a platform I thought had a lot of potential, so I just sort of dove into it. So all of the social media things, basically. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. How did uh, that spin into you, like doing like board game reviews or little snippets about board games on your own channel board game reviews it's entirely a passion project for me (laughs) because like uh the biggest stuff on my channel is always going to be like skits skits Mm -hmm. or like sometimes i do videos where i like eat 30 different lays chips or whatever just like whatever i feel like doing and most of your uh, skits are, like, extremely short. If they're a minute yeah. long, that's shocking. They're usually, like, a minute <laughs> or shorter, uh, and those can get, you know, like, millions of views or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, board game reviews, they're not going to get as many views just because it's a little more of a niche thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm very passionate about them. I get sent games to review. So it's it's kind of like this sort of hobby I have going. Like, I love games, and I want more people to play board games and get introduced to them. Uh, and the people will come to me at like conventions and stuff and be like, you know, like I actually love the board game reviews and I'm like, you're a true fan. True exactly. Fan, that's all awesome. true fans watch all the videos. But, um, I've, you know, people have been like, oh, because you of that video, I got into the hobby mm-hmm. and that's always been my goal is, um, whether it's me tweeting about games that I play or, uh, uh, making board game reviews. I just want more people to play it. Like, D&D got a huge, like, resurgence. Mm-hmm. And I would love for board games to get it, it, that big and that... I mean, it, there, it's growing. The hobby is definitely becoming more mainstream uh, as the years go on. But I just want it to be even more and more, like, loved and beloved amongst the world, basically. I think it's really awesome whenever you see somebody who's, like, big or huge on um, different platforms and things like that. And it's like, oh, man, they're talking about board games. It just seems like, I don't know, it's really cool. I mean, I guess at the Dice Tower and a lot of the, the reviewers and stuff out there, we're all mostly doing it because it's we're passionate about sure. gaming. And it's just weird um, how games grow, you know. We all want more people to play these games with. We all right. want to share, like... The, the face-to-face time with friends and family around the table. So it's just interesting to see how 
the hobby has continued to grow as time gone by. Yeah, it's funny. Like sometimes you discover like someone you knew who was like a board gamer, too, and you're like, oh, wait, wait, you play board <laughs> games? Like, what do you play? Like, Okatan? Okay. Oh wait, you played the Gallerist? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we can play. We let's play sometime. Like, let's it's, get down. It's so funny. Like the the levels of like, oh, how, how hardcore are you actually in this right. gaming? And I mean, you wouldn't want to ever treat it like a gatekeeping thing. No, like, no, no. Oh, no, no. you are there here. It's like, oh, so what? What kind of games? And they say a certain thing, and you're like. Oh, I know you're deep in, you know. Yeah, no. Any game, I, you know, if if any any game is great, you know, I don't mm. get me wrong. I don't want to be like I'm the gatekeeper. No, you play Catan. No, that's not what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah but for sure. But if someone plays the Gallerist, you're like, oh, <laughs> okay, you go hard. Like you will play anything, any <laughs> complexity level. That's like a friend of mine who, uh, like, I just discovered like like last year. Like we were at a con, and I was like, wait, so you play board games? What do you play? And I was expecting, like, you know, Catan or Betrayal mm-hmm. House on the Hill or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And she was, like, the gallerist. And I was, okay, we need to play. <laughs> we need to play at the same time. Because uh, I'm the type who will play anything once. Uh, doesn't matter what genre, what complexity mm-hmm. level. I'm just hungry to play as many as I can. I'm actually uh, trying to play all the top 100. And I'm Oh, wow, close. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and that changes, obviously. So if a new game come on, comes on, I have to play it. But I think I am. I have like 14 games left or so. Oh, dang! That's that's pretty yeah, intense. No, I, I think I've been going hard. You're yeah. definitely way further along than I am. But normally for me, I'm just like, I know I'm not gonna like that game that much, so I think I might pass on that one. You know? I There's totally like know what you mean. Too but... many sheep and cows in that game. You know? It's funny. Like some of the, <laughs> some of them. Like I'm like, oh man, I gotta play like. Lisboa or whatever, but at, at the same time, sometimes you play these games and you're like, oh man, the mechanics are actually really good. Uh, There's actually a company that has like the entire top 100, and you can scratch mm-hmm. off like each each one as you oh, play wow. them. So they have like a little scratch off poster you can have for the mm-hmm. top 100, which is kind of funny because the top 100 changes quite right. often. <laughs> so it's right, kind of right. like, well, that's gonna be relevant for a little while. Um, that must have been there. Yeah, they already got outdated. I think Underwater City has jumped up, and I had to play that. Sometimes stuff gets pushed off the list. I'm like, okay, I don't have to play that anymore. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> like, that's good. You're, you're secretly funny. changing your ratings on stuff to try to drop <laughs> like, stuff right, down. You're like, I hope this I up. Let's get that in the top hundred. Um, but it, it's cool. It, it's getting me out of my comfort zone sometimes because like some of the heavy euros. Mm-hmm. Sometimes like the heavy euros, like I was like, oh, that looks either so not my style or too complicated. But then I've been like pleasantly surprised. Like I finally played Twilight Struggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it wasn't nearly as heavy as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. It was great. I loved it. Have you played it? I haven't played Twilight Struggle, but I hear a lot of people say that about it. Like, oh, man, yeah. like, once you get past the box cover and the fact that it's, like, a war-ish game. Yeah. But it's not really a war game. It's all about, it's really, like... It's really a really fun card game. It's, like, yeah. a really fun card play. And then there is cool, like, area mm-hmm. control and stuff. Um, But it's not nearly... I thought it was going to be, like, this super hard to learn just... 10 hour epic mm-hmm. uh but it wasn't that bad like i was very pleasantly surprised it's one i'm actually planning to keep uh in my collection uh, that's awesome I enjoyed it so much you recently tweeted out a picture of like your collection like mm. recently and then what yeah. it looks like now and how much it's grown you're like friends right. don't let friends play board games or something like that <laughs> right right and that didn't even have every, that was every everything on that shelf is i've played it i oh, still gotcha. have, i still have piles of games that I have yet to play. Um, there's another shelf that has like some of the harder to fit games, like Gloomhaven or uh, mm-hmm. uh, Concordia or Mechs vs. Minions. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, yeah, the, but that Calax is like it's the curated uh, pride of my uh, collection so far, and I'm so, trying to keep it to that for now because uh, I know if I like let myself and just kept every game, I'd become a hoarder. Uh, so I'm trying to curate for now. What was kind of like your trajectory like into board gaming? I know I saw a video where you said you kind of started with like uh, Forbidden Island from mm. from Barnes and Nobles or something like that. But did you have like certain like notable games along the way? Oh yeah, that was the first one. Like I had played, you know, everyone played kids board games when they mm-hmm. were younger. Um, but the first designer board game I played that I was and that sort of gave me the light bulb of what this hobby was was Forbidden Island, because mm-hmm. uh, we were at a convention, uh, like some friends, and this was like a long time, this was maybe 2008 or something like that, yeah, yeah. a long time ago, 
Um, and we saw Forbidden Island on the shelf because we had never, none of us played board games like as a hobby. We were just kind of like, you know, goofing around. Uh, and we go, oh, what is that? Oh, that looks kind of cool. Like the cover looks cool. Forbidden Island, it feels kind of pulpy and like, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, okay, let's let's get it. You know what? It's not that expensive. Let's get it. And then a worst case scenario, it sucks. And you know, we don't, you know, we it's a goofy experience. But then we sat down and played it, and I was like, wow, this is great. Like mm-hmm. it's a really fun cooperative just adventure game like you're grabbing these artifacts and the island is sinking um that was definitely the first uh game that sort of clued me into oh like they're making games that are for like adults yeah uh, i had known about Catan because i played Catan with my cousins right <laughs> but the Catan wasn't the game that got me into the hobby Catan right. was like i was like oh it's interesting and okay that's neat but I think what helped me get get in at first were more thematic games like mm-hmm. Catan. I had heard of Betrayal at House on the Hill, so that was like the next one. Or, or, yeah. yeah, Forbidden Island, Betrayal. Um, then it jumped to like someone got me Dead of Winter as a gift, mm-hmm. uh, which was even more complex. And then I was like, okay, I need to see what else is out there. And then once I discovered Board Game Geek, that, you know, game over. That yeah. was like... Oh, there! I can see which ones are considered the best ones. I can put in stuff, and it really helps to be able to go. Oh, this is how long it plays. This is the complexity level. Mm-hmm. How many players it plays, and that can help you when you go to like a Barnes and Noble or later mm-hmm. on your local game store. Figure, oh, I want that game because that's a good fit. Uh, yeah. And then you discover channels like the Dice Tower and stuff. Exactly. And you can get recommended tons of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's so one of the things like we definitely try to in. do is, like, we try to get those reviews out there so it's like, okay, well, uh, I don't know what this game is. It looks cool. Let me learn a little bit more and see if it actually fits my taste in gaming, you know? That's why I right. feel like the reviews and stuff are really important to, like, I don't know, just help the consumer make the best decision for their purchase, you know? Yeah, I remember the first – I discovered the Dice Tower because I was getting – I was looking up expansion reviews for mm-hmm. – I forget what it was, maybe like Machi Koro or like uh, oh, gotcha. Imperial, Imperial Settlers or something like that. And I, I think it was a Z Garcia review. I was like, oh, oh nice. who's this guy? Oh, this guy seems cool. Like, And I was like, all right. <laughs> and I, I would always, so if I ever searched an expansion, I was like, oh, Z did it? All right, I'm going to see what Z said about it. Not knowing really much about the Dice Tower. And then I sort of discovered more and more about it, mm-hmm. and then I became a fan. Um, but yeah, like, it's because uh, there are so many channels now that cover so many like reviews or mm-hmm. recommendations or stuff, you know, you just Google a game and you'll find tons of information about it, which is cool. Yeah, I feel like I was the same way. Um, like cooperative games are really what mm-hmm. got me into the hobby too. Just because, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, what a board game? Because I played, I played Magic and role playing games. And I played Catan and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But it wasn't until I started playing like cooperative thematic games. I'm like, wow, you can work together on a team in a board game. That just kind of blew my mind at the time. And uh, Bioscar Galactica was huge for me. Just mm. like, oh man, the trader mechanic in there just got sort of like Dead of Winter. But Dead of Winter right. wasn't out. But uh, just games like that are, I think, cool entry ways into the hobby. You know. I think what makes those games in particular so like enticing is because there's so much tension, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't ever suspect you can feel that much tension and excitement from a board game when you're first starting to play them but i think so for me if i want to like get other people who are new and interested i try to pull out something light but that has that Mm -hmm. sort of intensity that gets everyone either like cheering or you know like something like pandemic or oh yeah um like one recent one i really enjoyed was like subterra i don't know if you've played that one Z keeps talking about it, speaking it's of so Z, good. and I keep it's wanting so to good. play it. And I'm like, every time he talks about it, he's like, you roll the dice at the very end and you just barely make it out alive. And I'm yeah, like, I want to play great. that game. <laughs> like, I, I, think, I think it was because of him that I heard about that game, and I finally got my hands on it like last year. Oh, nice. It was a huge, it was a huge hit. Like, game, games like that that are mm-hmm. e- excuse me, easy to learn, but super exciting. Those, are, I, think, I think, are the best ways to get people in. Uh, at least from from my experience of like, because I play with all sorts. Like I play with like really heavy game, like really like experienced gamers. But I also play with a lot of people who have never played a game. And I try to, it's like a, it's like being like a sommelier. It's like a like mm-hmm. a connoisseur. Like okay, oh let me pull out the best uh, game for you uh, for this crowd and uh, show you know it, it's kind of fun to try to cater what game to pull out based on who you're playing with. Yeah, for sure. What do you think? I mean, there's so many amazing video games out there, and they give huge, great experiences. What do you think it is about, like, 
board games. I mean, so many people these days, I'm pretty sure like a lot of the younger generation would be like, why would I play a board game when I can just play a video game? What do you think is like the point of like playing board games or what does it bring to the table that other things don't? I would say as someone who played a lot of video games when I was younger and now I still play video games, but Mm -hmm. not nearly as much, but board games has taken over everything. First off, it's just the social factor, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you get to play with like your friends face to face and have an experience together. Like I think as uh, video games have gone on and become more online, and you're like you know you're listening to your friends in a you know in your headphones with mics or whatever. Right. You know we used to have back in the day you had you know on the couch like, you know sixty right. four that kind of you know play Goldeneye or something together. Right. You're playing Smash together, actually you're sitting there Smash in the together. same room. You right. know so that's what I love about Smash is that you can still have that experience, but a right. lot of games have moved on to you're playing you know in your homes, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, board games you bring people together. And then as you're getting older and, uh, you know, you have less time in your life, a, vi- a board game is nice because you can have one experience in one, in a single mm-hmm. sitting, right? You don't have to, like, uh, dedicate 30 hours unless it's, like, mm-hmm. Gloomhaven or something like that. But it's like, you want, let's play Forbidden Desert. That's a mm-hmm. great, fun experience, and it's one single, like, one or two hours, and you're done. I think that's also a big attraction of what appeals to me about board games versus video games. Uh, is that uh, it's shorter? It oh, yeah. takes up less time, uh, and it has. I get to hang out with people, uh, and it's made me a lot more social. I mean, frankly speaking, like mm-hmm. just because I need people to play with, so I gotta invite people over, uh, <laughs> and it's made me like sort of strengthen friendships with people, like mm-hmm. people I you know were I was friends with, but like I, when we have this shared hobby, it's like oh we get to see each other more often, and uh, you become closer to people too. So that's another thing I love about it. And it's always awesome when you have those moments where, like, even just talking about the games, like, oh, man, remember that time so-and-so stabbed everybody in the back when they're playing right. Dead of Winter? Or, like, remember when the island sank when we were just about to get out and you you played the wrong card or something like that? I don't know. Um, no, board games can great. create those interesting experiences in that small amount of time. I used to play right. a lot of uh, D&D and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Um, but the thing is, like, you have to have a dedicated group that can right. meet every week, and it has yes. to be the same people. And yeah. um, the the main switch for me to board games, which is the fact that I can put it on the table, I can immediately mm-hmm. teach it to anybody, and we can have a compact experience together um, sure. and give you a little bit of feel. It's not going to be as in-depth or as grossing as a month-long campaign of D&D, but, mm-hmm. um, but you can sit down and have a cool little experience together, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's... As much as I love campaign games like Gloomhaven or mm-hmm. um, like I'm in a Kingdom Death Monster campaign or whatever, uh, but yeah, there is that. Oh, we, but we have to meet <laughs> once a week. And so many more games now. Like the trend, I feel is like uh, make more legacy games, legacy games, and like oh, mm-hmm. I don't have time to like play. I have like Pandemic Legacy Season Two. I got to play. I've got mm-hmm. like Charter Stone, Risk Legacy, Betrayal Legacy. And there's mm-hmm. a, I hear Clank Legacy is good. It's like a thousand legacy games now. And I don't have time to play, like, all of these. I have to get through Gloomhaven. I'm still, like, a third through Gloomhaven or whatever. I, I feel the same way. I was actually just recently talking on one of these podcasts about how I, I can't wait until there's, like, that board game retirement home when all these board <laughs> gamers, like, it's just, like, the never-ending convention where we just have all the legacy games. It's like, all right, Tuesday, we're going to yeah. have, have this, and Thursday's Meatloaf, but it's also Gloomhaven Day. Yeah. You know, it's like, thing. finally, time to play Charterstone. <laughs> finally. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, man. I, especially the ones that take multiple sessions it's like when am i ever gonna have time to play this but (laughs) that's part of the fun of the hobby is like Mm -hmm. finding time like um whenever i have free time throughout the week it's like okay i've got friday and and saturday open which people do i have to invite to play this game for the or if i want to play this game that day it's become kind of like a fun little puzzle game (laughs) of deciding who i can invite for specific titles if i want them to get to the table that's awesome um, so one of my favorite sketches, um, that you've done was, uh, mm-hmm. the whole Magic the Gathering one where you're basically oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah. really long turn combo thing where it's like, and now I tap my dairy farms and make dairy dollars. Um, right. what is like your experience with magic and stuff like that? Do you have a lot of stuff or did you get away from that Scott clean where some people may have spent way too much money? <laughs> It's funny, like, people ask me that because of those skits, but I have played Magic, like, a couple times. But oh, I'm, not, gotcha. like, a big, I'm not, like, a big Magic uh, player. Uh, gotcha. I, I like the game. I think it's cool. 
Um, back in the day, me it was uh, Yu Gi Oh for me. Oh, actually. there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was big into Yu Gi Oh. You were banishing everybody to the Shadow Realm. That's right, dabbling <laughs> with Pokemon, the trading card game a little bit. Oh, man. Um, but Yu Gi Oh was like my big thing, and then Magic, I I didn't play it until maybe college. Like I, oh, gotcha. I knew friends who had played it through like high school, but I never really sat down and played it. And I, I enjoyed the game. Like I think it's really good. Um, but I didn't need to necessarily have played Magic to know oh, how exactly. to make that video. Well, I mean, so, it's so kind many of like games have that kind of thing. Yeah, it's basically the same thing in in Yu Gi Oh or in in Pokemon and stuff like that. I used to remember when Pokemon first came out, everybody used to collect all the cards, and I was actually playing CCGs a little bit before that, so I was actually mm. building Pokemon decks, and I'd like sure. go around to like all the like neighborhood kids and be like, "Let's play Pokemon." They're like, "You play this game?" I'm <laughs> that's like, right. That's right. I'm like, yeah. ah. Because when I first started, I didn't know how to play. I just made up the rules, right? And then when I actually sat down and learned it, I was like, oh, you need energies and stuff. Like, those energy <laughs> cards that look so boring, you need those to play the game. Um, I was going to say, like, uh, uh, my favorite board game of all time is actually Marvel Legendary. Oh, uh, nice. And so that is, like, ripe for, like, okay, mm-hmm. I play this card, I play this card, I play this card, I play my whole deck. Like, that's... Yeah, exactly. You know, stuff like that. It's so... It's such a fun sort of trope in games that I like to play, like deck building games are usually mm-hmm. my favorite kind of games. Um, so, even though I don't play Magic, I know exactly the kind of BS you can get away with. with if I tap this and tap this, I can play this and do this and do this. That's my, that's yeah, my jam. Deck building is great for giving you that like CCG feel of like building up a deck and building up the combos just in like a short time frame. I have... Almost all of the Marvel Legendary stuff, and I they just like announced like three more expansions for that I game. Have and I'm like, all how how can I keep up? How can I keep I, up? I have every single thing. I even before they came out with uh, I don't know. Are you keeping up with it? Um, I the last one I have. I know I have the Venom one. Oh man, which okay. other ones have they come out with? They uh, they come out with a bunch of small ones. I don't right. have Shield. Tom just got that in. I think his review is going up with that soon. Uh, yeah. Revelation or the what, what's what's the one with Squirrel Girl? They did one. Oh, I this have is, I have that one too. This is how hardcore I go. Before that came out, I got the because they had those cards. Did you get the booster in, like, packs? Booster packs. Oh. I had to get them on eBay. I had I was like I want every card that exists. So I went and I got all of them through eBay. And then later they released this thing, and I was like, okay, I didn't have to do any of that. I um, I looked them up on eBay, and I was like, I ain't paying them prices. So. And I looked, and I was like, I'm a sucker. I'm gonna do it. Uh, I even like there were sets. I was like, I don't want this. Like like the Spider Man uh, Homecoming one. I was like, oh, I don't like that. They're like photos. Oh yeah, yeah. But then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna get it. And the the <laughs> cards are actually really fun, so That's I didn't awesome. regret it. Like I'm not a big Deadpool guy. I was like, oh, Deadpool. All right, that expansion was so silly. It was very silly, but, you know, I at this point, it's like I have to get everything. The only thing I don't have, which I, I think I'll never get it, is the stupid – they have the the thing where it was, like, from the movies. Remember that? They, they yes. re-released. It was, like, another core set? Yeah, yeah, and then they had, like, three cards that were different, like Iron Monger, and I was like, oh, I don't. <laughs> that floated around the office for, like, a long time, and we we're like, yeah. who's going to review this thing? It's like, it's just – it's Marvel Legendary again. It's the same thing, but with movies. It's just stills. a worse version, right? Because there's <laughs> less stuff in it. Uh, so part of me is like, should I get now? And I was like, no, that's the limit for now, anyway. But every new set of that that comes out, I also have everything from Marvel, or not Marvel, Legendary Alien, too. I just oh, played gotcha. uh, Covenant, which I liked a lot. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so I haven't played anything outside of Marvel and Alien, but Marvel is my favorite. Like, I. Every time I come back to it, like, I have the randomizer on my phone. I can just oh, nice. press it. It's a completely different game each time. Like, I love that game every time. Do you time have an expansion that's been, like, your favorite for it? Ooh, favorite? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I, mean, I personally, amazing. I personally really liked the Guardians of the Galaxy one. Just that one's it, great. It added the shards, and it was very mathy, but I just really like Guardians of the Galaxy, and it had Thanos in it finally. And I think yeah. this was before the movies even came out with Thanos. Um, right. So it was just like, yes, I'm finally beating up this guy. You know, it was That was a pretty great cool. set. Uh, uh, and it was – they're OP, though. Like, <laughs> they are pretty like, good. Like, they the, are pretty good. The artifacts and, like, the, the – pop- what were they called? The – you basically just get to save up fight or whatever. Yeah, you save, save up like ten fight, and it's like, all right, Thanos. Uh, that's a great set, though. Um, 
the champion set was pretty good with like uh oh yeah, yeah. On. that was really fun um i don't know if i have a favorite i mean dark city like was a huge like game changer mm-hmm. like that made the game like next level i think um but uh ooh, i have to i'd have to look at a list i think but my gut says maybe like maybe guardians or champions or um i like the noir one actually that one had some interesting oh cool things. yeah so yeah, I, I have a bunch now that I just haven't played enough to like have a whole lot of experience with them. I'm just like, oh my goodness, there's so much legendary, but I keep also getting them because I'm like, I want to have it all, you know. Yeah. So. Um. So when you buy a set, do you uh, how, what do you consider being done with it when you beat every scheme or what? Oh goodness, I don't know. I'm not even that far. Like I play just random stuff. Normally when I do it, I'll be like, okay, what mastermind do you want to fight? Okay, mm-hmm. and I'll I, I have all of the heroes with all mm-hmm. of their cards kind of like in little like uh, bags or whatever. So I can just kind of oh, – okay. I don't – I haven't done this recently because I have too many at this point. But I just like mm-hmm. spread them out and be like, who wants to pick what? And we just pick heroes oh, randomly and fight okay, up against cool. it. Normally the combos don't end up strong enough because the combos are really good like within a set. Sure, yeah. Um, but we still have fun just picking whatever random heroes we want. But I definitely have not – I have – there. it's basically not possible – to extinguish all the play you can get out of that game, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Um, for me, uh, I'm I have a very completionist mindset, so every new set I make sure I beat every. I have to beat it every wow. single scheme. So ev- I have like a whole stack of the schemes. I've beaten every single one. Some of them are take forever because you have to keep trying and trying because they're so hard. But I don't consider myself done with the set until I have completed every scheme in some capacity. I really wanted to make like a, a chart or like a poster or something like that. And I, I thought about doing this back when I uh, lived up in North Carolina and my friends mm. were really big into legendary. I wanted mm. to like have every single villain like from lowest strength to highest strength and then every Ooh. single hero and then be like, you have to defeat every single one, but you can never repeat a hero, you know? So it's mm, like, okay, cool. I, I would love to take the Guardians of the Galaxy because they're really strong, but what happens when we get to Galactus or Thanos? Like, right. you got to save them up to get to there. But I never actually ended up making it. It was just a thing in my head. I was like, oh man, that would be fun to you do. You could still do it. You could still do it. The dream is well, not dead. The thing is, uh, being a board game reviewer and a person that always has to be playing new games, it's yeah, hard yeah. to be able to continue to play. Like, Legendary could easily be a lifestyle game. There's so much stuff right. for it. Um, it's hard to continue to go back to the same game over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, when I see, like, people at the, on, like, the Dice Tower or whatever, I'm like, man, that must be... Because you have to play, like, every new game that comes out, right? For me, you know, who's doing it casually, I can do, like... If I really want to try, like, let's say Everdell, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to play Everdell. But mm-hmm. I don't have to keep – for me, I'm struggling to even – you know, with the top 100, that's been my new goal, right? Play the top mm-hmm. 100. But it's hard to keep up. So many games, good games come out every year that uh, – who has the time to play them all? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's so many, like, good games. There's no possible way to play all of the actual good games. I mean, we play right. tons of terrible games too because, you know, right. that's part of our service to the community to try to help sure. people know what's good and bad. Um, yeah. But you can't play all the good ones. You can't even play all the great ones. So it's, it's right. like, crazy. Like, we're in no shortage of, like, amazing board games coming out currently. Yeah, it's great. What do you think it would take for, like, I know you have a lot of audience that likes all sorts of different stuff. What do you think it would take for, like, uh, more people to, like, grab on or understand or be excited about tabletop games and board games? I think um, it's really, like, I mean, I can't get sit down and play with them, right? Right. But uh, something that I've, like thought about is like maybe one day you know playing game like maybe doing like a show where i like play games with like friends or whatever something mm-hmm. like that i think that can be uh enticing to people uh, um seeing like the game actually being played and how much and how interesting the mechanics are plus how funny it can be sometimes um other than that i think what's going to grab a lot of people is theme right mm-hmm. like if i pull out like mombasa and like Hey, it's about uh, imperialists in Africa. Nothing. Nobody's gonna want to play it, right? But yeah. if I go, oh, here's Zombicide. Okay, we're Black Plague. We're we're gonna kill a bunch of zombies. Which, by the way, I love Black Plague and Green Plague. <laughs> um, we're just gonna kill some zombies. It's gonna be great. Uh, yeah, let's go at it. Uh, that's that's what's gonna attract people, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you're someone who just likes all games, then maybe a Euro game might work. But I think like 
the flash here, the better. And then you can be like, okay, you like that game? Maybe try this game. Um, other than that, I don't know. Um, just Even just talking about games, I think, mm-hmm. is what gets people interested. Like, I know some people might get tired of my incessant tweeting of board games, but some people I know for a fact have you know tweeted at me and been like, hey, because of that game you talked about, I actually went out and got it and uh, tried it, and I really liked it. Uh, one game I know that I did a video like of us playing it, and it really got a lot of people interested in the game was uh, the mind because I oh, was that's like awesome. that's because that's just like a super easy game to like mm-hmm. show. Oh, you everyone can understand how to play that just by looking at it. Uh, so I think just having that sort of experience of watching it being played and going, oh, oh, I want to try it. That's what's going to get people into it. I think it's kind of interesting because you have like a unique opportunity compared to like people come to the dice tower. If you're watching the dice tower. You, you you know what board games are, you know? Right, it's like right. normally you're like a super fan at that point. You're like super sure. deep into all the reviews and top ten lists and stuff like that. But a lot of your audience has come over from all of your cool sketches and a lot mm-hmm. of like like joy of like video games and anime and stuff like that. So right. like they might not be as exposed to it. So I think it's kind of interesting that you're uh, bringing people along for the excitement of tabletop gaming as well. It's entirely based off my passion for it. Like <laughs> I mean like if I'm being totally frank, like – uh, the vid- like the board game reviews uh, in terms of views are not going to do nearly as well as like a skit, right? Mm-hmm. But I think a rule of thumb for my channel has always been to do what I enjoy, nice. uh, no matter what, and not uh, feel pressured to only put out videos that only my audience would like. I kind of treat it more as like a one for me, one for us kind of thing. Like, <laughs> okay, I'll do a skit and everyone will have fun. Here's one for me and a percentage of my audience. But I'm, my goal is for that percentage to grow and grow and grow. Uh, That's awesome. I think as time has gone on, I think I think I have definitely gotten more people into it just as a result mm-hmm. of talking about it and putting reviews out there. Um, and that's always been the goal. So for um, Dice Tower fans that are listening to this, um, what – like I know you've done a lot of voice acting and stuff like that. Where maybe have people seen any of that sort of stuff or maybe said, can find some of your, your skits and stuff like that as well? Voice acting-wise, um, I – one of the big things I did uh, last year was uh, Borderlands 3. Uh, mm. I voiced Flack, uh, one of the four playable characters uh, in that game. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus just came out. I voiced Vasaraga in that. Uh, let's see. Uh, like I do a lot of animation, so like mm-hmm. there was like OKKO OK on Cartoon Network. I voiced a couple characters. Um, what else is there? Like. A Hat in Time was a video game that I uh, voiced in. Uh, just uh, we're a whole bunch of stuff. Um, <laughs> I've I heard that the to... voice acting like thing is very competitive, like trying to get oh. different parts. Oh yeah, uh, especially once you get to the level where you're like auditioning for like big cartoons or video mm-hmm. games. You know, the competition is ridiculous. I think. You know, even when I was starting out just doing, like, indie games, uh, even that competition was tough. Like, there's a lot of really talented people out there. Um, but for me, it's just been about... I, that's been... In terms of work, that's my passion, and I've just been trying to just do more and more as much as possible. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's a very competitive field, for sure. I wonder if, like, board games will ever get to the point where... and I, The problem with board games is most of these publishers can't afford voice acting stuff but man Mm. it'd be so amazing like some of these story games to have more like like narrative driven games to have like Mm. apps and things that could play voice acted stuff um i know eric who's part of the dice tower he's done like the one night ultimate werewolf app he does the the voices for that sort of stuff like everyone close your eyes you know oh yeah yeah simple stuff like that um but it'd be really cool to see more voice acting in board games as well I could definitely see like something like Chronicles of Crime uh, becoming something that is fully voice acted. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be way more expensive though, so it'd have to be like a mm-hmm. big company to be able to afford that. But who knows? I think that'd be a cool evolution. It, it would basically become like a interactive radio play mm-hmm. at that point. Like you're just, but I would, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think the main thing is like so many of these, like there's lots of cool board games out there, but so many of these does like publishing companies are actually very indie and very small i mean right. an indie video game company probably has way more overhead than like an indie board game company because like just right. a few people getting these games published you know um, right. but it'll be interesting like the more people that get into it and the more excited people get about board games the more that it could support exciting ideas like that you know right 
I know that uh, I recently played um, the new Zombie Side. I don't know if you saw the Tabarua thing where it's like Zombie Side Evolved, where no, there's a it, it's like a digital table that actually all of the Zombie Side figures it recognizes where they are on the board. Um, and okay. you put all the tiles out, it tells you how to put it up, but it has like cutscenes in between. Whoa. And I know all of the cutscenes were like voice acted by, I don't know the voice actor's name. Probably people are going to be like, oh, it's obvious, but whoever does like, um, Jake the dog in, um, oh, John DiMaggio. Yes, John DiMaggio was voice acting all the characters for this zombie side, um, oh. like game. It was really cool because like you'd have like actual decision points in the game, and I like Zombie Side good enough, but like this Zombie Side I loved because it had a lot more this story and feel. I'm sorry, well, I don't understand. This is on, so so Tabaru is, is the thing that um, Cool Mini or not or Simon announced, and it's basically like a RFID thing, and you can actually okay. put the figures on it. Um, they announced it like last year sometime and at Gen Con which is like a big convention in Indianapolis tons of people yeah. go to it they were doing demos for mostly like media people and stuff like that mm. but they were kind of like showing it off and talking to people about it and basically um, when you move your characters around on the board it, you'll like set them in a room and it'll, the app will actually know that you're in that room wow. and then also um, like you'll like have a little target marker and you can like shoot into other rooms and and it okay. also tells you how many zombies to put in each room and kind of like how to move them around. But then also um, it had basically like dice that you'd roll and it would know which sides the dice actually hit. Whoa, and, and normally okay. when you're seeing all of this sort of stuff, you're like, man, it's there's so much tech and app and stuff. And you would think it would take you out of the game. But yeah. for me, it like simplified and streamlined everything so much. We were still having those moments where somebody grabbed a chainsaw and they ran into the room with all the zombies and they rolled the dice. And it's like, oh, kill five zombies. We didn't even have to look at the actual icons on the dice. I mean, you could oh, look at them and be the like, so it just calculates be like, all of it for you. It calculates all of it for you. And it's like, oh, wow. immediately you killed five wow. dudes. And another cool wow. thing is they had it where all they had a whole bunch of like iPhones there as well and they were all linked so like you know in like zombie side you could like trade items all yeah, of the yeah. item cards were digital and they were on the actual apps themselves you could select a trade action on the phone and just swipe it over and it would appear on the person's phone you were trading it to and it was wow. really cool i have no clue how long it's going to be i think they're probably going to kickstart it eventually but just so that's like the, mansions of madness zombie side essentially it's mansions of madness zombie side but level. to the next level where like Everything's voice acted out, and wow. everything like the Mains of Madness doesn't actually know where your characters are. Right. In this yeah. game, it actually knows where your characters are on the board. So, huh. it was really cool. Um, but I haven't heard a whole lot about it since Gen Con because it's probably a thing that takes a very long time to make. Yeah, so. that sounds like an insane level of technology. But I'm very curious to see what's that. What that's like. That sounds really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um. With all the uh, – I know you do a lot of, like, sketches and things about anime and things as well. Have sure. you played any board games related to anime? That are good. <laughs> exactly. Or... That's the problem. <laughs> uh, oh, what have I played that – Millennium Blades is kind of anime. I know. But... that. That I think Millennium Blades is, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! themed, which is sort of It's Yu-Gi-Oh! themed. I played the Attack on Titan deck building game, which is, like, the – DC deck building game. Oh yeah, like the um, oh, Cerberus right. engine or whatever. I can't. Do you know any anime games that are good? I can't think of any at the top of my head. That's what makes me sad. Is there's like there's some out there, but I really wish like there was more like actual like there's so many amazing IPs out there in anime. And I know uh, it's probably like a younger generation thing. Most sure. board gamers are a little bit older. Um, yeah. But I feel like with the the generation coming up, there's a lot more like people that really enjoy anime and all of the the manga and stuff like that. And there's so many great stories that come yeah. out of stuff. I would love like a story built game around like so many of these amazing IPs um, that I just haven't seen yet. My dream game is Legendary One Piece. Are you familiar with One Piece, the anime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be, like, the greatest thing ever for me. The, the crazy thing is they could probably have more expansions than they have now for Legendary it, with all yeah. the content that's in One Piece. Oh, man. I mean, how familiar are you with anime? Like, what, what kind of – do you um, watch any anime or – I watch some. I, I like – I've seen all of Naruto, basically. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I Even heard, that would be a great Legendary set. I, I heard that you uh, dropped off when uh, somebody died. Uh, who was it you said yeah. died? Uh, 
uh, without spoiling for listeners. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, I'm so yeah, wor- I, yeah. I I'm pretty yeah, sure people I, are I worried drop about off at that point. Yes. Yeah. But um, so I've watched all of Naruto. I really enjoyed Trigun. Um, mm-hmm. I actually have a Trigun tattoo, so that's I guess how oh, how nice. deep I am into that. But um, sure. I, I haven't watched a whole lot. Like I know there's people that know tons and tons and tons, but I just really right. enjoy a lot of the stories of some of them. So it's it's pretty interesting, and I feel like it'd be really cool if there were more like a lot of Japanese designers design like tiny little card games, or like I know CCGs are really big over in Japan. Right. It'd be really cool if like the whole cooperative thematic thing would like catch fire over there. It'd be awesome. Yeah, and especially with the IPs, like get get some good designers, and even the minis would be incredible. Mm-hmm. Like the minis would be gorgeous. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. Most anime games I've played have been either okay or bad. Uh, and it's mostly the companies that are actually working on these IPs. Yeah. They're just kind of okay. I I know there's like a Final Fantasy looking game on Kickstarter mm. right now, and I'm just like, but it doesn't actually look. Like it's gonna be good. Like I don't yeah. know. It yeah, always yeah, makes yeah. me so sad. It's like man, that's such amazing like ideas and IPs out there. They made a Naruto game with that same um, Cerberus engine or whatever from the oh, DC yeah, deck yeah. builder or whatever. And I played it and I'm just like, okay, it's fine, you know. Yeah. But um, there's so much story in those IPs that the story could really be brought out in other ways. I think. Yeah, yeah. I hope at some point that just. One of them just does well, and then we just see a, a like a storm of just good anime games. I would love that. I think it might be a generational thing because a lot mm. of the board game designers, like the good board game designers, are still like I mean they're making other games on their interest. But I I I mean the whole anime thing and manga has hit the like younger generation like so hard now. I can't yeah. imagine it not taking off at some point. Now, this isn't anime, but I did hear, I think, that Emerson Matsuchi's doing a Metal Gear Solid game. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've actually the... been there when when that's, when that's that's been played. I uh, hadn't actually played it myself, but he was showing uh, it to me. That sounds amazing. And so, and that's like, kind, that's like adjacent to anime. Metal yeah, Gear yeah. Solid is, you know, a Japanese game. So I'm like, man, hearing stuff like that, like that kind mm-hmm. of, that good of a designer with that good of an IP... I'm hoping we get more. I want more good IP games, essentially, because uh, I, I, I love anime and video games. I feel the same way. Um, and I was fussing at Emerson because uh, we're good friends, but I was joking like he made all these Century games, which are fun and awesome. I love them. Like, man, I really liked uh, when you made Spectre Ops. It'd be so cool. And then like after having a bunch of those conversations, he's like, oh, like I'm gonna be working on this Metal Gear game, and I'm really excited for that game to actually finally come out because it'll be yeah. cool to see with all the sneaking mechanics. And I think he said he made uh, there. It's like an 100 page like mission book or something like that and like it's he, I think he made like a mission for like every single mission in the game or something like that. He he was wow. talking about it on the last time he was on this podcast and he's an extreme Metal Gear fan. So, um he's got like systems in there where you can unlock different items, but you can go back and play previous missions with the items you you unlocked and stuff. So he's trying to make it very very true for like the fans of Metal Gear um, because he is also one of those fans, you know? That sounds amazing. I'm not even that big of a Metal Gear fan, but I have friends who are huge Metal Gear fans. So I'm like, I really want this to be, like, as good as it sounds because that's going to be, like, some of my friends, like, dream come true is a full... An excellent Metal Gear Solid game. I, I really need to text him because I, I should be like, dude, because I keep telling him I want to play the game. I told yeah. him I want to play the game, and yeah. he, he called me over and showed me his friends playing the game, and I didn't yeah. get to play it. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to see him next week, and I should be like, dude, bring your Metal Gear game so we can play it. He's probably going to make me play some other new prototype, but it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's like, I'm done with that game. But you know, <laughs> that's how that sort of thing works. Right. Um, But yeah, I would just love to see more thematic games based off of those crazy anime stories. Sure. So is One Piece your current favorite anime? It's not my current favorite, but it's one of them. Gotcha. Uh, but I have, like... I mean, my favorite is uh, one that no one's ever heard of. Not no one's ever heard of, but a lot of people haven't heard of, called Chihayo Furu. Uh, that's my favorite anime of all time. Um, but I do love One Piece quite a bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, have you seen the... Um, what is it? 
After School Dice Club. So when that was announced, everyone was tagging me on Twitter, like, look at this, like, look at this. This is the anime for you. I actually have not seen it, but it looks cute. Really? I, that, that's basically what it is. It's very. I don't. I don't know the the titles or the names of the different genres, but it's very like slice of life, like slice after of life. after yes. school, like girls, like but they're getting together, literally playing board games in like right. a board game club, and like it's all about that these girls' journey of becoming friends together. But it'll like stop in the middle of an episode. They'll be like, let's break out this game, and it's sure. basically like a Rodney Smith rules exclamation <laughs> video in the middle I'm of this with anime game. characters where they're like, this is how you do it. You place these out, and they've had all sorts of different games on there. They had like they're actual real games, like actual right. real board yeah. games. And it's been I saw pretty the cool. Trailer and like yeah, the, the the board game room. It was like I saw mm-hmm. like uh, uh, the Witcher game back there. I saw yeah. you know like because uh, I think there's like. One big publisher in Japan that like licenses like all the Western games, I think. That's awesome. So they just had like access to every single game that exists, pretty much. Uh, it's very surreal watching these anime girls pull out or play. Like you see like uh, a zombicide or something in the background. You're like, that's weird. But I, I mean, for for me, that's another one of those things where like board games are creeping into these things that are not traditionally board games, and I'm like, right. the opportunity this show has just for like, I mean, if there's a bunch of people in Japan watching it, like, hey, maybe they'll get more excited about board games. I know they have lots of different shops and stuff like over there. Um, yeah, for they've, board they've games. got board game cafes there too. Uh, um, I know like board games were like creeping into like backgrounds of anime scenes because I think just mm. the artists were like fans or something like that. Uh, yeah, I. Whenever I see a board game not where it's supposed to be, I'm always excited. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's keep let's keep this up, you know, get the exposure out there. It's been so funny. Um, recently, the Dice Tower was on actual like South Park. They parodied like our board game breakfast segment Wait, on really? South Park itself. Yeah, I, I, I should I should send you the episodes of it. But there's one where do you know like our board game breakfast live show that we do, yeah, and we're yeah, like yeah. all sitting there. Like I I'm normally at the computer like running it, but um. They shot for shot, like, parodied, like, our little intro, and but it was all about, like, weed and stuff. <laughs> it was – it was I mean, it's South Park, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But th- we're like, oh, my goodness, that's like a nod to the board game industry. But they didn't mention the Dice Tower. They didn't mention board games, but it was obviously shot for shot, like, the Dice Tower. Then the next episode was all about board games. Like, the entire thing oh, was about, okay. like um, – a boys club that was playing board games at school and then girls were trying to come in and just the whole like dynamic of that in a very South Park fashion. Um, but I know have to... one of them, I forget which one is a huge board game fan. Um, Trey Parker. Cause Trey we actually, Parker, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, we... he's actually a big board gamer. So he, I'm, that's gotta be it. Right. That he's... Yeah. Um, we we may or may not have like hung out with him at Gen Con and met up with him and stuff, but, uh, uh okay, but, okay. but it was just so funny. The fact that, um, he has like, made an actual episode like he mentioned the dice tower and rodney smith and board game geek and all this stuff that's another like example where board games are like going into mainstream media and people are like yeah what is this blood rage you speak of that sort of thing <laughs> that is awesome i'm glad i'm glad that the dice tower was mentioned on south park of all <laughs> which is all so things. funny to think yeah. about like family friendly dice tower right on south park you know yeah. that's great <laughs> Uh, we we introed like our next board game breakfast uh with with a towel. It's like here's our new friend Towley or whatever, just because mm. Towley was in the scene. I don't know. It was, we were just poking back and forth at each other. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So as far as uh like your collection grows, are you gonna continue to grow stuff? Is there another board game that's like caught your eye that you're wanting to get next? Get next. Um. Right now, or are you so st- buried under review copies? <laughs> I got a bunch of review copies. I still have games that I like. So for like every Christmas, like everyone just gives me board games, basically. That's all I get. So I I managed to get through most of them. Um, I still have the um, the Lord of the Rings game. What's it called? The Journeys the one in that's Middle like Earth. Of Madness. Or, yeah, Journeys in Middle Earth. Yeah, I want to play that at some point. That's sitting over there. I'm just looking over at my pile. Um. In terms of the top 100, there's, like... So, this is how hardcore I'm going with it. I have, like, a color-coded list of, like, okay, this friend has these games, and this f- these games are at this <laughs> local game, like, game cafe, so I can play it there. Um, but there's only two games that I don't know anyone 
locally that owns them, and I don't know where, so I have to maybe buy them. And that's Gaia Project and uh, Dominant Species. Those are like so. Those might be ones I have to buy at some point just to uh, get them played. I've uh, actually played Dominant Species. How is it? It's it's interesting. Like yeah, it's it's been a while. It's like a four hour game. Mm. Um. Where on the very last, like I wasn't doing super well the whole game. I was kind of running an event, so I was only halfway paying attention to what was happening. So I was like trying okay. to keep everybody in line and going back and taking my turn. It's um, pretty heavy, but it's, right? It is is quite heavy, and it's okay. very much like cones and cubes and stuff. So you're just kind of okay. like, uh, this could be this would be really really cool if it had like nicer components. Sure. sure. Um, but it it overall it's about like area control and taking over the different areas and having dominance for your species to get mm. certain perks and get certain amounts of points. Uh, but then there's certain things that pop up, like there, there'll be like ice ages and stuff, but then there was like a, a volcano that popped up right in the middle of all of my, basically like my spider, I guess it was a spiders or something or arachnids. I don't even remember what mine was, but a volcano yeah. popped up in the middle of my arachnid civilization and burned them all to the ground at the very end when I was already in last. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I love this game. Yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a good game. And I know there's a lot of people out there that really like it. So I probably would need to give it more than one play to, to fully judge the game, you know? Gotcha. And the Gaia project, I've played Terra Mystica, so I know what yeah. to expect from it. Um, I, I hear it's just like slight, a little more advanced, but uh, gotta play that at some point. Gotcha. So, yeah. So I think they'll, probably those two are the ones I'm like eyeing to purchase actually at some point. Uh, but I do have. Oh God, what else do I have? Like, I got sent like a whole bunch of review stuff as well. Um, mm-hmm. Just trying to get through that at some point. Gotcha. So where do you do most of your game playing? Is it like just at home with friends, or do you do go to cafes or game stores and stuff like that? A uh, majority of gameplay is that he's at my place, gotcha. uh, and I usually just invite people over. Um, but there are some good local places, like uh, cave cafes that I will go to uh, every night. Like I'm going to one this weekend. Um, otherwise, yeah, mostly here. We have a, we don't have like one of those nice board game tables yet. Mm. We will gotcha. <laughs> at some point, but we have a pretty good table for it because it like can uh, extend outward and it's like oh, nice. it's like good space. Um, so we just roll out a mat, and that's where we play most of our games right now. Nice. Have you ever gone to like any of the board game conventions or anything like that? I really want to. Mm-hmm. Um, part of me is like con because I, I go to a lot of cons as a guest, like anime cons right. and other sorts of cons, right? Uh, I haven't gone to a con for fun in a long time actually <laughs> uh, and i wonder how if i have the stamina for it anymore but i am very tempted by like gen con or like any other like i know i know essen is in germany i was like oh maybe i could go to germany you know get oh, uh, man to germany uh, gen con and essen are crazy i haven't been to essen yet i'm probably going this year but gen con is like gen con is like crazy for the spectacle of it because there's just like right. thousands and thousands of people like tons and tons of publishers and it's just like packed and yeah. there's not a whole lot of time to actually play games much at all or to i mean even most of the like designers or publishers you might see there are just busy so yeah, like most yeah. of my friends in the industry i'm like hey if i see you at gingcon i'll say hi but i know you're not gonna have much more time than that because it's so hard to spend any time with anybody at those things but it's it's really fun for like the hot new thing and things are announced gotcha. there. It's like, it's basically like the Black Friday of like, like board game industry. Um, mm, in essence, that, basically, that sounds terrifying. Actually, it it kind of is. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've seen videos of like the crowds at Gen Con. No, yeah, it's, I have. Yeah, it's insane. Right. Um, but Essen is sort of similar, but it's just in Germany and it's very much like shopping. But then also, mm-hmm. I think you have like. A lot of families there too, because a lot of times, like in Germany, I think board games are very much like a family thing. Like you'll, sure. like parents will play board games with their kids, and they'll get the newest Spiel des Jahres game and stuff like that. Um, right. I haven't been yet, but I'm excited to um try that out soon, hopefully. Yeah, part of the problem for me is that um I don't know how it would be at a board game con specifically, but at like mm-hmm. uh anime cons or PAXs or whatever. Um, just because. With my videos, they get spread around a lot on the internet, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of people know my face, so I get stopped a lot, of, like you know, for gotcha. oh, I, oh, it's that guy, you know, let's get a photo or whatever. 
So it's actually really hard to get around cons a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, actually, it, what's funny is that if I'm a guest at a con and they have like a board game, you know, a lot of cons, that, even anime cons will have a board mm-hmm. game library you can play games at. Mm-hmm. But like I can't go to the play in the public space because then I'll mm-hmm. just get asked for photos or whatever. But what I've been doing lately at cons is like, hey, can I use the green room at night? and bring <laughs> those games up and then it's been great because they'll be like yeah sure why not so like i'll have like some of the staff and like maybe like some of the guests will just play like board games till 3 a.m <laughs> like at night at these cons that i'm guessing at and that's been like fun for me uh so i'm wondering i don't know what it would be like at like a gen con because obviously there's like a demographic of people who have no idea who i am right right i think the but younger people generally recognize me at this point nerdy people i mean yeah so i think gen con would be packed i mean maybe something that was lighter like like we do our dice tower conventions and stuff like that sure. which are more about like playing the games and they're normally right. like the audience is like a huge like their board game player audience you know right um i know gen con has a little bit more of the the cosplay and different stuff like that so it attracts like a huge wide variety right. um but yeah, I mean, until now, because you're going to be so famous from this podcast, you know, I, everybody I, in Dice right. Tower is going to know exactly. I mean, skyrocket from this point onward. So everybody's going to be like, I have Gaia Project. Let's play. I, Where are you I at? I not leave my home anymore. Uh, <laughs> what are cons that you recommend? Like just what are the, like your favorite cons? My favorite cons are the ones that are more like game playing. I mean, we do a Dice Tower con. We do mm-hmm. a, a Dice Tower cruise where we actually – have like yeah, a board game con really yeah. on a cruise ship, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool because like we bring we have like a library that we basically like build of games that we think are really good. Like these are the best games. We build a gigantic library of them, and we do a lot to try to maintain it. And then we try to also like pimp out the games a little bit. Like Ooh. we try to like put like blinged out components in there. Like oh that's got like cardboard tokens. Let's put like plastic tokens in it or metal coins yeah, in it yeah, or something yeah. like that or like oh those miniatures aren't painted let's paint the miniatures up that sort of stuff like we try to make it special um and make it make it interesting and exciting so we do that for like dice tower east west and then we have a cruise um and then we also have like a small little retreat as well mm, where it's okay. just like like 100 or like 200 people or something like that so sure. that's kind of like our little vip event because there's a lot of people that actually want to play games with us which is right, kind of cool right. so they get to come and do that sort of thing um, but yeah, and then BGG Con is very similar. Board Game Geek Con that's down in Texas. Um, How many people is at that roughly? I know it's slightly bigger. Um, our cons are normally around like, like east and west are like around like a thousand people. Okay. Or so a little bit more than that. Sure. Um, but Board Game Geek Con has been around quite a bit longer, so I think it's actually they might still cap it around the same amount, maybe around like. 2000 3000 oh, okay. like so that's, that. that's like a nice smaller end but like more intimate yeah yeah like gen con is that's, what cr- was yeah, that's it? crazy it's like 60,000 or something like that like i don't know maybe it's more than i don't know they're they're huge and essen's even bigger so it's but that's in germany you know you might go over to germany sure. and you might not be mobbed as much you know <laughs> right right so but um uh, but yeah they're they're always a lot of fun cuz there's lots of people to interact with, and you can get to meet a lot of these designers from different games. And yeah. It's just pretty cool stuff. Yeah, no, I definitely – at some point, I got to go out to one of them. I, I've, I have friends that go, and they always have a good time. So I'm like, oh, I should just I should Just go. go in cosplay. Then you're good. I've thought about it. I <laughs> put on a mask. Yeah. That... Maybe better than Brock this time. but <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, awesome stuff. Man – uh, so many games to play, so many things to do. Yeah. But uh, it looks like we're nearing the one-hour mark, so I guess we Ooh, will wow. start to bring this thing to a close. All right, um, okay. But yeah, so thanks for coming on the show. If anybody doesn't know, I mean, I feel like probably a lot of the Dice Tower people might not know about like your sketches or your reviews or your top ten lists or any of that stuff you do. Where can sure. they find your content? Uh, yeah, Google ProZD, P-R-O-Z-D. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do, like, skits and just whatever I feel like. Sometimes, hey, you like board games. I do board game reviews every now and then when I have mm-hmm. time. Uh, yeah, I just do stuff that I think is funny and or interesting. Um, and then I'm on Twitter. Uh, just Google ProZD. You'll find me on every social media platform that there is probably. 
And I'm sure that, that watching this podcast, there's tons of like huge like video networks that are going to be looking you out for your uh, voice acting work. So like right. Cartoon Network, Disney, like call them, like email them, yeah. something like that. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's definitely been a blast. And uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.